This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer at Lowe's with Memorial Day savings on major appliances like the Smart Whirlpool Top Load Washer featuring the two-in-one removable agitator and a color you'll only find at Lowe's. Take it out for bulky items, leave it in for a more thorough clean. You can customize any load, plus skip steps with the load-and-go dispenser. Simply add detergent once and skip the refills. Memorial Day savings start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. BJ, I still can't believe the time is here, and we now will have a pro hockey team playing this weekend for yeah. a preseason game as the Kraken will be taking on the Canucks on Sunday. And this is the man whose voice you'll be hearing, the voice of the Seattle Kraken. Please welcome back to the show, John Forslund. John, welcome back, man. Hey, BJ, Migs, good morning, guys. Great to be with you again. Oh, John, John, it, it is so exciting, man. I, I just was, uh, Steve and I and Danny and a lot of us have been to the complex up there at Northgate Station. And I was, I watched some of the, uh, publicity shots being done with all of the, the great props and the smoke and the lights. And I was like, man, and they were all dressed up and I'm like, this is real. This is happening. Fantastic, isn't it? You just start with that facility, which, you know, I've been all over the NHL. That's, that's the best, the best one in the league. There's no doubt about it. And the players continue to talk about it day after day. So yeah, it was great to see you guys out there. And, um, you know, the only thing I missed, uh, Migs, uh, you know, auditioning for the emergency goaltending position. I don't know how that went down. Oh, man, I was going to say, like, I was one of the lucky nine people that got invited out to do the tryouts yeah. for the e-bug or the emergency backup goal. And it was an experience of a lifetime, John. Uh, I guess they said they're going to show some footage before the game uh, on Sunday during the, pre- the, the pregame special. Well, you should know that I, I have some scouting reports, like I'm privy to this stuff, and uh, we fired those scouts, by the way. Oh. <laughs> John, the best part of that, interviewed me afterwards, and uh, uh, Ross Fletcher from the from Root Sports, he's like, so what What would you think if the team picks you as the backup goalie? And I just looked at him and I go, I think they made a terrible choice then. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always ways to justify bad draft choices and bad trades and everything else, but I'm not sure about your circumstance. That's that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be quite different. Yeah. Well, I think you bring me on board to inspire the actual goalies to never get hurt. Yeah, yeah you got it. You got uh, it. And John, and how about you, man? What you know? What yeah. what, what what are you looking forward to? What are you excited about uh, as as you as you hit the mic for the first time that we all get to hear this Sunday? Uh, as, again, six p.m. The Canucks and the uh, Kraken uh, exhibition game, first one of the season on Root Sports. What are you excited about as we get uh, as we're fast approaching the season? Well, I, I told the fans on day one that you know this is my thirty first NHL training camp, and it feels like my my very first one. And, you know, there comes a point where the anticipation becomes overwhelming. And I think there's such, there's been such a buildup, you know, going back to the first time I was, I was here in July for the expansion draft and the entry draft. And I've been here now three weeks and, and getting acclimated to the area. But you, you get to that point exactly where we're at right now. The, the players want to play. We want to do what we do. Um, it's going to be different because, uh, you know, our first game is in a building that's, you know, foreign to the NHL, not foreign to hockey. You know, Spokane has a rich mm-hmm. uh, junior hockey tradition, but those buildings are difficult to do what we do, and it's hard to broadcast out of those places. So it's a, it's a virgin uh, voyage here for all of us. Looking forward to it, though, and it's just one step. Just one step of a long journey here, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I know that. 
John, I saw and we had a few people text in during uh, last week just saying how cool it was to run into you and meet you at the, the big jersey launch that happened over at the Kraken Community Iceplex. What, what was that experience like for you to meet some of these brand name for some some are brand new hockey fans, some have been lifelong hockey fans, but all all of us are brand new Kraken fans. What was that like to, to meet some of the fans and just kind of, you know, get to be right there while people are anxiously buying those jerseys? It's incredible, you know, and the only thing I can hearken back to, and it's totally different, is when the team I was originally with, the Hartford Whalers in 91, moved to Raleigh, North Carolina in 97, and we were kind of dropped out of the sky. It was a relocated franchise. It wasn't, you know, an expansion team. So you didn't have that buildup. You didn't have the awareness, and it was a different generation. We didn't have the, the ways we do today to, to publicize, and then the Kraken have done a fantastic job with all that messaging and all the things they've done to reach out to the community. So everything is in place. So when you get here, it's tangible. You meet fans. You recognize that they all have different stories. They all have different journeys. Uh, um, they come from different places, or they come from here. Some are aware of the game. Some are not. But it's all good, and it brings me back to a time where I, I had to convince people in Raleigh about the sport. There'll be a little bit of that here, but not as much. Uh, this is going to be totally different at this stage of my career. When, when I get an opportunity to mark time with a franchise, and I get to do it twice, uh, as a broadcaster, not a lot of people get an opportunity to do something like this, so I'm privileged. And we're talking to John Forsland, uh, of course, voice of the Seattle Kraken, which you can catch him on Root Sports this Sunday for the first ever game exhibition between the Canucks, and that'll be at 6 p.m. Also, you can tweet John at John Forsland if you want to, you know, ask him anything. Uh, and John, you're right, man. The Kraken have done such a great job. Just basically, you know, it seems like with everything, you know, everything. we, you know, we don't know because uh, we have no idea. Like, like you say, some of the facilities around the league, um, you know, you hope they design a good situation. But I mean, so you're saying this is like for a lot of players are saying head and shoulders better than any yeah. practice facility that, that anybody has in the NHL. I, guys, I, I learned a long time ago. You go to the players. And the players, the players don't pull back. They let you know when they don't like something. They let you know when they like something. And I asked a few guys, and some guys, I, you know, there's a few guys on the team that I know already, and there's many that I don't. And, um, you know, I asked Adam Larson, I said, well, what about the digs over there? Because I haven't been in the players' room yet. I, I've been, uh, I've seen Climate Pledge and what the, in July and what the layout will be for the, for the crack in there. Um, obviously I've been through the, the practice facility in all facets, but the team areas. And so I haven't seen it firsthand and he was like, wow, man, you won't believe this place. It's absolutely great. And you know, what's most important too is, is how the players are handled. And the Kraken also have done a remarkable job handling the players and their families. And uh, when you're new to a team, uh, these guys most importantly care about uh, their significant others, right? Their family members mm -hmm. and how they feel about a brand new place. And, Every player is uh, saying the right thing right now, and you can and you can tell they're not they're not holding back. So that that's a good sign. We well, had a chance to talk to uh, Brandon Tanev recently, and he was a blast to chat with. And I was wondering for you, like getting to talk and meet some of the players, who do you feel like is going to break out as being like that rock star for Seattle, like the 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 player that the fans are just going to absolutely you know just fall in love with. Well, he's one of them, right? Yeah. Because it's utter chaos every time he's on the ice. So every shift is chaotic. <laughs> and I, and, and I, what I would do is, you know, if, if I'm a fan and 13's on the ice, you know, it's nice to focus on the puck. Obviously, that's, that's important in hockey. But uh, take your eye off the puck uh, when Brandon's on the ice and, and watch him. Because there'll be things happening well behind the play you might not want to uh, take your eyes off of. That's the kind of guy he is. He's also a great personality, as you know. So he's going to be one of many that will be out there in the community that pe people just gravitate to. And what I like to say about this, because it's, it's a great question, it's a common question, because people say, who's going to break out? Who's that one or two guys that you're looking at? And I say, you know what, if they keep 23, which is the maximum on the roster, there are 23 different stories. And mm -hmm. each one of these guys, no matter what the role is with this team, gets to kind of repurpose their careers. That's kind of fascinating. You know, there's, there's a couple ways to look at it. You know, did you, did, were you left unprotected? You know, what were the reasons for that? Or is this an opportunity? And this is an opportunity for these players to come in here 
and and slot up, you know, slot up in their careers. Wherever they work, a third-line player somewhere else, maybe you get a chance to play in the top six forward group, you know, maybe get a chance to sniff a power play and where you were previously, you didn't get that opportunity. Or if you're like a Jordan Eberle, Mark Giordano, players like this, veteran guys, Grubauer, the goaltender, you know, you get a chance to make a real difference here. And, and talking to many of my colleagues around the league, they're pretty impressed with what's on paper to start. So uh, this will be a really good competitive team in a division where you, know, you can make some things happen. One thing I noticed that some people were talking about, obviously yesterday was the first time there was an actual like practice and training camp for fans to watch and, and uh, reporters and media. And it seemed like the, the the theme that a lot of people sent, seemed to bring up was that this team seems very fast. Even I think some of the players yeah. said that as well. Like, there's an intensity and quickness to this team. Would you agree? Yeah, and I, I go to Adam Larson again because we had a long conversation. He's a defenseman, right? And he, he's a really good defenseman that can eat a ton of minutes, a uh, great athletic specimen. Uh, and he was commenting on that. He said, man, these forwards are quick. And that was in the informal workouts. And then it ratchets up, right? So yesterday you could see, you know, everything come into focus. It's all real now. And the coaches, the head coaches out there and the assistant coaches are out there and they can't be out there in the informal skates. And now it's a, a totally different uh, scene. And, um, yeah, uh, you could, you could easily pick that up and that's going to increase, you know, each and every day, but speed is where the game is at today. Um, I can tell you guys, it's changed over the last 10 years. It's, it's remarkable how quick it is. It's, it's as a play caller, it's hard to keep up. Uh, you do the best you can with it, but it's a, it's a remarkable game. And that's why the live experience for, for new, new fans out there, people want to get turned on to this, you know, get to a game somehow. Uh, it's nice to watch it on television. It's nice to listen on the radio and all that, but you got to see it live. When you see hockey live, it's, it, it doesn't compare really to anything else. And that's not just because I'm a, a biased guy that's been in the game over 30 years. And uh, we're talking to John Forslund, voice of the of the Seattle Kraken on Root Sports. And I do like John that for a lot of people, and, and myself included, I grew up in a hockey town, but I'm not. I, I there's a lot about hockey that I don't know. And they're having like a hockey one on one segment at four o'clock on Root, a couple hours before the game, so that the people who are not familiar with hockey can at least get some of the rules explained to them, the basic stuff. Because you talk about speed, and you know, for us who watch football and watch baseball, because we've seen those games, we understand what speed can do in those sports. What does speed? Do do in hockey that like you said has made the game change what is it that speed does that will give our team a little bit of an edge if in fact we are one of the speediest well it's a game of transition and it's a game of momentum and a game of free substitution so those three things factor into the speed element you know how fast you play with and without the puck it doesn't necessarily mean that you are faster skaters than the other team it means you can make a short pass three passes quickly out of your zone and you're already hopping on the other team on the attack. That's how the game's played today. If you can't execute those fundamentals, you're going to have a hard time as a team. So it's really a, a synchronized group of five getting the puck up the ice with, with tremendous speed. And then it's all about emotion. You know, uh, how can you turn your home ice, you know, into a favorable situation by utilizing your speed on what we call forechecking? That's where you jump on the other team in their own zone, in their defensive zone, make it hard on their defensemen to get the puck up the ice to do what I just explained. If you can jump on them with speed, you're, you're there. And then you can get the momentum. And momentum is all about the way the team plays. And hockey has this magical pendulum that goes back and forth with momentum. You, you think the game is over, then all of a sudden the tie changes and the other team can't stop all of that momentum and the crowd gets behind it. And that really comes into play in the Stanley Cup playoffs because for two months in the Stanley Cup playoffs, that's just another level. So whatever you see in the regular season, double it when it's playoff time, and that's when it's really special. Well, you just said the magic word. You said that the crowd can get behind them and somehow aid the situation. Well, I think Seattle knows about a crowd that right. can really help a team. <laughs> they know about that. Right. Wow. No doubt about it. No doubt. Wow. And that reputation is well known, and that's why you know the, the building would be a tough one for the opponents. That's fantastic. Well, you know, who, who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love being able to go to a game and feel like you're cheering that, you know, your presence can actually make a difference? That is, yeah. that is, boy, that's awesome news. This might be a silly question. Not even a question, just a thing to bring up uh, with you, John. How cool in person do uh, Chris Drieger's pads look? <laughs> unbelievable I mean the pictures are I mean I've grown up a hockey fan my entire life and I mean it, it's crazy to think of we've gone oh. from the old leather pads where oh god to how yeah. they can do something just so creative and different and and, and still have it like a, a, a classy touch to it it's not like over the top obnoxious it's just like just the right amount of cracking 
uh, detail on those pads? Well, the goalies are intriguing, right? Just by the nature of the position. I'll leave Migs out of the equation on this, but I, <laughs> Thanks, John. I, I, I really, I really believe. Again, I go back to those scouting reports, but those guys are gone. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the the goalies, the goalies, uh, uh, first of all, get all geeked out about their equipment, right? So they put their own um, stamp on their equipment, which is something that never happened. You know, they had, they never wore masks back in the day, believe it or not. Right. Um, but now with the with the goalie mask. They can also personalize that. And we'll get into that this season. We'll get close-ups of, of, bo- of both guys and, and their masks and what it's all about because there's personal messages on there, team messages, messages of inspiration and so on. It's whatever they want to do. So it's kind of a neat thing. And then uh, the other thing that's different, too, you mentioned the old pads, the old brown leather pads that used to get wet and heavy. Yep. And, uh, you know, it used to be 30 pounds of equipment that a goalie used to wear back in the day. It's far lighter today, more compact more aerodynamic. They have to move really quick. They have to be great athletes and skaters to play the position. But the thing about it is they always look great because the guys can wear brand new pads. They don't even have to break them in anymore. They used to have to break them in for a couple of weeks at practice. Uh, I've seen guys at this level take them right out of the box, put them on and play the game. So uh, they always look uh, you know, sharp, sharp dressed men, right? They always look good. And uh, that's that's important. And uh, I think, again, that just adds the fan experience because you, you want to learn about this stuff. Well, John, we are so excited as Sunday is the day, the first time we get to see the Kraken hit the ice against another NHL team. It's the beginning of the preseason and uh, 6 p.m. Sunday night, Ruth Sports. John Forslund is going to be calling that game for us. I'm looking forward to hear your excitement as you do it, John. And I understand it is going to be in a barn that's not, you know, you know, conducive to what you're used to. But you know what? I'm sure you're going to be fantastic. And it's going to be in Spokane and again, 6 o'clock on Ruth Sports. John, so good to have you with us. That's a lot of pressure, but I will, uh, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll get my mistakes out of the way early. How's that? But no, we're looking <laughs> forward to it. And uh, it's a pleasure being on with you guys. And uh, let's just get cranked up for this. We're going to have a remarkable journey all season long. Uh, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Okay, take care. John Forslund of the Seattle Kraken, the voice of the Kraken. Steve, it's close, man. Oh, <laughs> it's Sunday, man. It's, it's, wow. so, it's, it's so real now. We got a bunch of parents and kids that were checking out the gorilla exhibit at a zoo. And then they saw something that they will never be able to unsee. And we've got the audio. You're going to hear it at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Make your kitchen ready for every summer gathering this Memorial Day with LG and Lowe's. Our exclusive InstaView appliance suite includes ranges with air fry, refrigerators with slow melting craft ice, and an exclusive dishwasher you can only find at Lowe's. Plus, you'll get up to 10% back via a MasterCard prepaid card when you bundle eligible LG products via rebate. Shop Memorial Day savings at Lowe's. Offer valid 3 3 through 5 18 on select LG items only. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details and timing. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. A bunch of parents and kids were checking out the gorilla exhibit at the Bronx Zoo the other day when one of the gorillas started doing something intimate with another gorilla 
Uh, let's just say that uh, one gorilla was uh, talking into the other gorilla's microphone. Uh, I have yet to watch this because I wanted to wow. get my like, reaction watching it live. Because I read the story and I'm like, oh boy. But I'm like, I want to see this when we are on the air to get that natural reaction. I haven't seen it either. So <laughs> Yeah. It's All like right. one of those things. Because apparently this is something that's common. They, they said like, the gorillas, wanna, they get frisky from time to time. And they don't care if people are watching them. So Wow. All okay. right, so we have the video here, and it's on New York Post website. Okay. The, the one gorilla lays down the other gorilla. Oh, boy, yeah. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, it almost looks like a body. She potentially, oh, boy, yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, yeah. no, that's nothing other than what we think it is. Yeah. Based on the movement of that other gorilla's legs. Yeah. Wow. I thought, oh, maybe they doing like a body shot. Yeah. Well, I mean, or a raspberry on the belly. Oh, no, the raspberries, wow. yeah. Wow, nope. wow, wow. Not at all. Wow. <laughs> and do they explain? Do they explain why? Like, you know, have you seen anything at all? Like, I, I like if I was watching an episode of some sort of like nature show on National Geographic or something or Discovery, I'd be maybe they would go, well, here's why, because we know why humans do the things that we do. But I mean, gorillas. I mean, why? Why are they doing that? I mean, oh, uh, I, 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 gorillas just want to have fun. Yeah, they do. Oh, I see. Cindy Lauper did. She sang about that, didn't she? <laughs> I mean, uh, dude, according to the BBC, and oh, the, 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 yes, that version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the big, beautiful gorilla community. What do they have to say about this? Microphone talking, as we like to call it, is actually fairly common throughout the animal kingdom. All types of species, from cheetahs to bears and bats, all engaging in that act. Bats. So, you know, this is the thing, because our, you know... Our society, uh, you know, certain places told you you should never, you know, should never do stuff like that. That's when, and I always was raised like, oh, okay, I guess we're the weirdos because we're doing something unnatural. And it turns out it's actually very natural outside of even the human community. I did not know that. Beth probably someone filmed it. So we have audio of the reaction of the, the zoo goers. Oh, boy. Okay, let's hear that. Don't look, Toby. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah. tell the kids. Because, like, Mommy, yeah. what's he doing? It's natural. It's a learning experience, everybody. You know, well, that's what I thought, too, because I didn't think it was microphone talking. I thought it was I thought it was the, the lady laying down and the man, could, just because they looked, the, the bigger gorilla kind of lays the la the smaller gorilla oh, down. Oh, a different type of microphone. Yes. Yes. But, so did we determine, though, was it a microphone or was it, a, was it a, like you said, a lady gorilla? I, I, like, I can't Jenny tell. might be right. I mean, we need more footage. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's just based on the size of the two gorillas. That's See, just I what I thought. See, I couldn't tell either. I, I, I knew that something was going on. But I really couldn't tell that it was microphone or if, in fact, you know, the, there was some Braille going on. According to one of the reports, says, no, it looks like it was a male performing on a female. So, yeah, oh. I think, Danny, I think you might be right. Oh, so then it's not talking into the microphone at all. It's uh, whatever you on the xylophone. I don't know. What do we come with? What, what word do we use for <laughs> harmonica? Uh, yeah, there we go. The, the harmonica. Harp. Yeah, yeah that's the little harp playing. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. And then I'm reading on this story. Apparently, it, 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 it's also that at times, like these girls join when when they decide to donate to charity, they join the 69 Club. Apparently. Oh, oh there wow. we go. Yeah. Do you realize though that the gorillas then are more evolved because a lot of women will tell you that there are a lot of you know men that they've encountered in their life that don't like to join that club. And the gorillas are much are like no problem. You know what? I mean, I'm here for you. You're here for me. This is what it's all about in Gorilla Land. The video though is so impressive because it's just like the guy gorilla just goes over, and puts his hand on like the the lady gorilla's back of her head, and just says, "Lay down for a second. Yeah, and it's like, whoop whoop, and then they just keeps on going for the wow. rest. Wow! Of- Imagine that's how all of us were like. Just you're at. You know, a restaurant, and all of a sudden, the table next to you, some random couple, lay down for a second. Well, the gorillas have it made. You know what I mean? You know, every, well, what are they supposed to do? I mean, they got, people are always showing up exactly. watching them. I mean, it's like, guys, give us some privacy, or we're just going to have to do it in front of you. I just, but the fact that they know how to do that, like, they know how, I mean, that really, at that point, man, that means that they know that, hey, once in a while, you got to just lean back and, and have some fun.
They also say uh, the the bonobos. That's a type bonobo. Of bonobo. I mean, bonobos. Oh, yeah, bonobos. I think is what, <laughs> what he, I think is what he had when he was talking to her. They're also known as hippie apes, and they're known for having kinky sex. Really? Mm-hmm. And what? what, what, what why? Why? What, what, what why not? Them? I mean, but how do they know how to do this? That's what really gets me. It's like, you well, know. How do we know how to do it? You just kind of, it's like, isn't it just like something you just kind of figure out? Yeah. Well, we're, he- well, hold on a second. <laughs> but we're humans. We do a lot of, we do a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily naturally needed for us to get by. Like, you know, we make everything complex. You know, if you want to eat something, look how animals go do it. They're pretty easy. They go out, they do what they got to do. We, we got to build restaurants. Then we got to figure out what the tip is. All of it, just, all just to get a meal. But like animals, you figure they just do what nature intends them to do. That's it. It's just instinct. So for them to be able to like know that this isn't anything but for pleasure is like, to me, I didn't realize animals did that. Well, I thought animals just did eat, it, sleep, mate, defend, we're done. It makes sense, though. Like when they do get that like natural instinct to mate, to reproduce, they're like, huh, this actually feels pretty awesome. I wonder what else we can do with it. Yeah. Well, they learn like any other creature. And judging well, by how that see, one gorilla's legs were moving, I think she was very fond of what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Very interested in it. I, I just didn't know that they learn like that, Vicky, because a lot of animals don't have memories. Like they just don't have the ability to retain like memories the way we do. So that's why I was shocked to think that, you know, the gorillas would be like, hey, this is, I can like do this with you. Like, you know, I mean, it's one thing to go, yeah, let's do the main activity that we use to, like, you know, basically keep keep the species going. But he's going off the script. He's like, I know this has nothing to do with making babies, but I do know you are going to have maybe yourself a great afternoon. That gorilla's like, you want to freak out all these people watching us? Yeah, lay down for a second. <laughs> I yeah. did. If you watch the video too, I think it's kind of funny because you see the other gorillas and there's like a few other ones yeah. there, and they just kind of like see what's happening and they just like get the f out of there. They're, They're like, get a room. Yeah, it's like ah, <laughs> man, Sally and Jack are at it again. And I agree to come to this Bronx Zoo. You told me none of this kind of hanky panky is going to be happening. That's fantastic. And you know something? I mean, really, is that going to hurt anybody seeing that? I mean, with all the other crap that we have in the world when it comes to violence, that isn't going to hurt anybody. You know, you, everybody laughed pretty much. Right. It would have been a lot, way different story if all of a sudden one of them like bit the other one's head off. Yes. Toby would be traumatized. If anything, Toby's going to get a giggle. Look away, Toby. That yeah. was the best part. That yeah, time. that's like, it. Don't look. I don't want to have to explain this to you. Wow. I am impressed. I am very impressed with the gorilla community. I, I You know what? <laughs> I had no idea that they were this evolved. I you mean, there's a lawless community in the, in the Bronx Zoo. Well, Just do whatever you like- want. It looks like everybody, though, was on board. It looks like everybody was happy. You know, nobody seemed to complain about anything. I mean, you know, the, the, the apes went and did their own business. It's hard to know. Now I'm kind of curious about, like, they said bats do it. Like, that just seems Yeah, crazy. that is. The bats do it to each other? When you said cheetahs, too, and at that point, that kind of scares me. They have big teeth. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Like, you got to figure that out. <laughs> And by the way, we've only seen proof that, in fact, the dude will be more than happy to, you know, help out his female friend. But we haven't seen it the other way around yet. We need, you know, so we don't know if that happens. Maybe he's just a giver. He doesn't care about that. Yeah, you may, you may be right, Steve, which, again, makes him much more evolved than a lot of men on the planet. That's for sure. I feel like he's the leader of that little, that that posse of apes. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. like, yo, what's up? Or maybe yeah. she's the leader. And she's like, Yo. Yeah, at that point, I mean, like she's got him doing Dinner her business. served. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah dude. I, uh, I think she might be in charge. She might be, yeah, she might be Charlene in charge in that joint. Someone just texted, I know this is odd, but I just saw my friend's pet parakeet uh, making love to himself last night. What? It was doing it to one of its toys, and when it finished, it started singing. Well, that's a natural reaction. Yeah. I didn't even know, like, I don't even know where parrots, I mean, I guess it's, it's in the normal place. I didn't, I guess they got to do it somewhere. I didn't know they do it, like, to themselves. Okay. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm not touching that toy ever. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, I started, like, looking up, like, how bats do it, and it's usually, like. Man, weird. our internet search history today is right. going to be My targeted bad. ads are going to be so weird. Yep. But yeah. what blows my mind, not only is it, like, mo- like mostly male to female, but somebody sat there and studied this with binoculars and a video camera for 13 months. They were just watching bats do it. And bats do it upside down. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm like, this did they have to get job. like a? They have to get, yeah. Did they get a grant to do that, or are they just doing probably? That on, like, yeah. And how do you like? 
I mean, I, I, my wife sometimes like, hey, what are you planning on doing today? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'll go here, go there. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to like grab the binoculars and watch bats do it for another That's two it. hours. Oh, yeah. That's it, buddy. Didn't Wild you yesterday? Yes, I'm still working on my thesis. <laughs> and then when they, they go back, it's like, how did you spend our grant money? It's like, well, we found out that bats usually do it in the morning. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's what they discovered. Bats like morning sex. All right. Well, what about the and also bats do do like like they take care of each other, mm-hmm. not just for making babies. Well, they're fighting crime at night. It's only fair. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's one particular bat. No, 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 not no, all of them. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and, and wait, we don't know. You know, we have to see what Catwoman has to say about the whole thing. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, there you go. Congratulations to the gorilla community. Seems like things are going well. <laughs> What a day at the zoo. Yeah, they're yeah, in the zoo. What else they got to do? How is the time? How is the trip to the zoo? Well, a learning experience? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Toby saw something I didn't think he was going to see today, babe. <laughs> I feel like there were a lot of mommies that could really take shots at their husbands <laughs> if they wanted to and go, well, look at that guy over there. Even, Even the gorilla it. does it. Even he gets it, honey. They're oh. just creating content for their OnlyFans. Mm. You know what? Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah. Only apes or something like that. Only apes. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what, Steve? Start that. No. <laughs> well, listen, no. I'm not saying you got to participate. I'm just saying start it and give the apes a, a forum. That's I, all. I feel like that could still cause a lot of problems. Yeah, maybe you're right. That seems like bad PR if I start an Only Apes page. BG. Boy, that's, you know what? That's the next Mark Wahlberg. Is it Mark Wahlberg the Planet of the Apes? That's the one I want to see. Mark, get together on Planet of the Apes 7. Or no, Planet of the Apes 69. That's the, that's wow. the movie. That'll be the movie, right? No. Someone said, did Danny call the gorillas Jack and Sally? Does he ever stop thinking about Nightmare Before Christmas? I caught no. that too. I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah. Yeah, thank you. No. And, I, and the answer is no. Yeah, I don't. One person brought up a very interesting theory, though. What if the gorillas saw the zookeepers doing it? Ah, and that's how they I learned. learned it by watching you. <laughs> like late night action after, after zoo after hours? Yeah, I mean, you know... You never know. You never that, know. That's why I want to. I really want to find out how they learn this behavior. Yeah, I'm with that. I, 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 I am really fascinated by how the gorillas know this is a thing to do. So Jack's like, "Hey, Sally, let's try this." We saw it. <laughs> the zookeepers do it, and then Sally's like, "I don't know." And then they try, and she's like, "The zookeepers seem to be onto something." That was pretty cool. <laughs> let's right. do it in front of people. Yeah. Well, you know what? There is an audience for everything, isn't there? So they, said, they could call it "Gorillas Gone Wild." Oh, yeah. There you go. Because I mean, they are kind of wild in the first place. So, yeah. um, KISW, as you know, is presenting Ghost and Volbeat at Climate Pledge Arena. That's happening on January 27th. You can listen all day through 10 p.m. to get the code word. Then head to the contest page at KISW.com. That's where you can enter for your chance to win tickets to the show. And what is the code word for this hour? It's going to be tough to remember, Volbeat fans. The code word is Volbeat. Huh. The code Ooh. word is <laughs> Volbeat. Volbeat. Tickets go on sale starting today at 10 o'clock at Ticketmaster.com. Get all the details at KISW.com. And yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. Which Avengers actor co-stars alongside Zach Galifianakis in the 2010 comedy Due Date? Steve Carell. No. Oh, crap. Uh, Seth Rogen? No. Oh, man. Um, uh, 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 Robert Downey Jr. Well, yes. Wow. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, you want a shot at beating Steve and hope that he doesn't pull one out of um, his gorilla? Uh, 206 421 Rock will play Beat Migs at 850 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're, we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, you'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before uh, your case is even over. Uh, chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three or three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. 
This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer at Lowe's with Memorial Day savings on major appliances like the Smart Whirlpool Top Load Washer featuring the two-in-one removable agitator and a color you'll only find at Lowe's. Take it out for bulky items, leave it in for a more thorough clean. You can customize any load, plus skip steps with the load-and-go dispenser. Simply add detergent once and skip the refills. Memorial Day savings start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev.